In this video, we're going to talk about Lewis and Bronsted asses and bases. And these are different ways of defining uh, the species we call asses and bases. So here I've drawn out three different examples of reactions, and they're all related, and we'll talk about how they're related as we go through. And you look at the first reaction, we've got HCl, it's hydrochloric acid, and NaOH, and these are reacting together to give water and NaCl. And in the second reaction, we've got, actually this is H2SO4, this is sulfuric acid, and NH3, which is ammonia, to give us NH4 and OSO3H. And in this third reaction, we've got H3O plus reacting with OCH3 minus to give us methanol, CH3OH, and water. So like I said, how are all of these reactions related? What is similar about each of these, these seemingly different, different reactions? Well, if you look closely, if you look closely, I'm just gonna rub this stuff out here. You'll see that it's kind of, what's, what's different or what's the same about all these different reactions is that we're all, each of them we're transferring an H or as we will say a proton because it's gonna be the H without its electron. So an H, H plus essentially. Each of these reactions, an H is being moved or a proton's being moved from one species to another. So in this case, it's moving from chlorine to oxygen and it's moving from oxygen to nitrogen. It's moving from oxygen to another oxygen. So in each of these reactions, this hydrogen, this H plus, is being transferred from one atom to another. And this is such a common type of reaction that, that it's it obtained a special type of name. In fact, when a reagent can donate a proton, give away a proton, we call these Bronsted acids. So Bronsted acids, they donate a proton, which is H plus. And so I'm going to circle each of the Bronsted acids here. Well, I guess we could include the Cl minus. It's just a counter ion for the uh, for the H3O plus. It's a spectator ion. It doesn't participate in the reaction. Now, conversely, any species which is going to form a new bond to hydrogen, which is going to accept a hydrogen, is called a Bronsted base. And they accept a proton H plus. And example are Bronsted base is R here and here. And here, you see each of these species go on to accept a proton. And this definition stems back to the early 20th century in Scandinavian. I guess we shouldn't leave out the special O. So this is how we define, in one definition, how acids and bases are defined. So a Bronsted acid donates a proton, and a Bronsted base donates or accepts a proton. So any species which can donate a proton can be considered to be a, a Bronsted acid. And so here's some examples. Other examples of Bronsted acids would be things like, well, water could donate a proton. Uh, NH3 could donate a proton. Uh, HF, you know, HBr, HI. These could all donate protons, but even species like you know, alkanes, HCH3. It's not a very good Bronsted acid, and we'll talk about what makes something a strong and a weak acid later on in the series. But anything which has a proton can act as a Bronsted acid. And similarly, anything which has a lone pair, anything which has a lone pair can act as a Bronsted base. So for example, water can act as a Bronsted base, and so can CH3 minus, and so can Cl minus, and so can so many other species, we can draw an infinite number of different types of Bronsted bases. These are all able to accept an H plus. They can accept an H plus. Actually, one example that's not 
a Bronsted base might be CH4. So CH4 doesn't have any lone pairs. It actually cannot act as a Bronsted base. So it's important to know it has to have a lone pair in order for it to be able to act, or it has to have a pair of electrons to be able to act as a Bronsted base because it needs to be able to accept a proton. Okay, so if you look a little more closely at, at these types of reactions, you can see that there's a different way, a slightly different way of seeing these reactions. Instead of looking at them as we're, we're moving a proton around, we can look at what happens to the electrons. So let's just have a closer look at this type of reaction. Let's just take a really, really simple reaction. So previously, we, this is a proton donor and this is a proton acceptor. Instead of looking at the proton, you can look at the high H plus as a, an acceptor of a lone pair. Can accept a lone pair from our OH minus here. And the OH minus similarly can donate a lone pair to the H plus. And so this is a different definition of acidity and basicity. These are known as Lewis acids and Lewis bases. And so for example, H plus is both a Lewis and Bronsted acid. We're really looking at the same thing. We're just it's just a matter of whether we're paying attention to the atom or paying attention to what's happening to the electrons. So we're really looking at the same phenomenon, it's just looking at it from a different perspective. So H plus is both a Lewis and a Bronsted acid, and OH minus is both a Lewis and Bronsted base. So you see how this lone pair on the oxygen is donated to the H plus to form a new bond, so therefore uh, OH can actually act as a lone pair donor or a Lewis base. So Lewis base, Bronsted base in this, in this example would end up being exactly the same thing. Now there are cases where the, we can see that the definition of Lewis acidity is a little bit broader than the definition of Bronsted acidity. And, and this is one example I want to show you what this means. So if we look at this reaction between H plus and NH3, H plus is clearly a Bronsted acid, or donating H plus, and this is clearly a Bronsted base. And we are, um, so it's a Bronsted acid and it's a Lewis acid. And this is a Bronsted base and a Lewis base, so BB and LB. Now, if we look down at this next example, we'll see that we have a reaction between BF3 and NH3. And BF3 is accepting a pair of electrons from the NH3 to form a new bond. So BF3 is definitely a, it's definitely a Lewis acid but it's not a proton donor. So therefore, it's not a Bronsted acid. Although it's accepting a pair of electrons from an H3, just like an H plus would, it's not a Bronsted acid because it's technically not H plus. And the same thing goes here for AlCl3. It's also a Lewis acid, but not a Bronsted acid. Um, but it, you know, still NH3 is still a, in this case, it's acting as a Lewis base and it's acting as a Lewis base, not acting as a Bronsted base in this case. Okay, so the key point from this is the definition of Lewis acidity is broader it's broader and, and accounts for a greater variety of chemical reactions. If we just restrict ourselves to examples where we're transferring an H plus between different molecules, then we're restricting ourselves just to Bronsted acidity. But this whole phenomenon of acidity uh, in terms of being able to donate and or accept a pair of electrons is a lot more broad. And um, later on, we'll talk about how we can apply Lewis acidity and basicity to a lot of different reactions that you'll learn in the course of Organic Chemistry 1. So this will become important much later.
So the key point for today is just that the definition between so becomes important later. So the key point for just today is is that we have two definitions of Lewis of acids and bases, Bronsted acids which can donate a proton and, and Bronsted bases which can accept a proton. And then if you look instead at, at the Lewis um, case, we've got donations and exception ex, donation and accepting from lone pairs. And so it's a slightly different de definition, broader definition, and more applicable to a greater variety of different reactions.